Now, I think we've, we've covered off fairly well some of the benefits of the online qualitative research from the perspective of those conducting the studies. What about those taking part? What kind of feedback do you get from people participating in online qualitative research? So the people, the respondents who participate in online research really like the fact that they can engage themselves in a study whereby they don't have to move from a location where they're quite comfortable taking part in the research. So, you know, there's a clear advantage in terms of travel, in terms of cost, but also in terms of being comfortable in an environment where you are more likely to be much more open with your responses. The other um, aspect which respondents like is the fact that you can show a huge variety of stimuli online um, and there are many different ways of actually capturing what the respondent is trying to say. So some of the tasks which they really like are, are whiteboard type tasks where they can actually write on the screen or they can actually uh, highlight different areas in, in an online methodology. So um, again, from a, a respondent's point of view, there are a, a, number, of, a number of advantages. And, and as I said, they like the fact that they are they can do the research at any time, at any place, um, and also sometimes they feel like it's, it's more interactive and they are really, really engaged in the response itself and therefore, again, being able to elicit a much deeper, much richer insight um, as compared to more traditional face-to-face um, -face qualitative methodologies. Now, on your point there of interactivity, critics of online research might say that you, you lose some of that interactivity or you can't pick up on some of the subtle nuances of the respondent. So is it possible to conduct kind of live studies where the client could still maintain some interaction and, and pick up on some of those pieces through online research? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the as I said, the advances in technology have made the the responses and, and the, the research much more real time. And, and so a perfect example really is, as I said, something like either an online bulletin board or an online community where you have a moderator and then you have a number of respondents who are all in various locations, but they can all see each other on the screen and they can all have that conversation at a particular point in time. And so it's actually quite similar to being in a live situation, except the only difference is that you have a webcam and the respondents and the moderator are, are in their own location. And then the, the other advantage of that is that the, the observer, they can be wherever they want to be. And so just as they would be in a, a central location behind a screen, they are sitting behind their desk looking at what the research is taking place via, again, an online uh, link. Um, and, and so, in, in essence, that is a live type situation. Uh, and again, you get the same sort of insight and the same sort of interaction between the moderator and all the respondents that are taking place in the research. Okay. Now, if I just ask you to cast your mind beyond the pharma, my sense is that online research has been conducted in other industries probably for longer than it has within the pharmaceutical space. So do you see online research techniques that are utilized by other industries that pharma could learn something from? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, pharma is a, a relatively conservative sector. And I think, you know, obviously one of the advantages of that is they, they can learn from advances in, in other sectors. And so, one of those areas, and we know this is moving in the pharma sector, and that is getting much richer insight from consumers or from patients. And so one of the um, areas or one of the methodologies that is being utilized in, in other sectors is this concept of crowdsourcing, where a particular concept or a particular idea or a particular um, therapy area is is being discussed in uh, in a forum. And essentially what you're doing is you are asking a number of respondents, albeit patients, to actually just give their thoughts upon, for example, patient information or education or whatever it may be. And essentially what that helps to do is, is really to drive the communication from the company from a patient's point of view. Now, I use the word patient because obviously it's in the healthcare sector, but this is something that has been used 
very effectively in in consumer markets whereby they are looking at developing new marketing campaigns and they put a, a link on a particular site and they ask all the consumers out there who may have any touch points with that particular brand to just give their ideas about how they can make things better uh, and essentially it means that the consumers then become an extension of the marketing team but it gives much greater much more deeper insight as to what um, piece of information are actually driving that marketing activity so that's one area and then the other area which we're seeing more and more is mobile phone technology and that is accelerating hugely in in a number of consumer markets whereby you have iPhone apps or you have different types of applications on smartphones and again this is something that can be translated and transformed into the pharmaceutical sector whereby again either physicians can actually conduct research at the touch of a button on their handheld or then you can do the same thing with patients and, and really get a feel for what they're feeling if you're looking at patient type research within a particular therapy area. So with all this new technology coming through, uh, you know, my final question would be to ask you where you see qualitative research going for pharma and, and more specifically, do you think that offline qualitative research has a future within pharma? Well, I, I think that offline qualitative research will always have a place. However, what we're seeing is that there is a significant increase in the use of online qualitative research. And this is really being driven by two things. One is the financial pressures which the industry is going through and therefore the opportunity to conduct research but with a reduced travel time. But I think also the advancement in the different, different technological advancements and innovations that are coming through means that these different types of qualitative methodologies, so again ethnographic research or online bulletin boards, we're going to see more and more of that being transformed and translated into an online platform. However, offline will always stay, I think there will always be a place and you know, we've seen that with quantitative research as well. Online is now becoming slowly the majority of research that is taking place from a quantitative perspective but there is still research that takes place offline in the quant area and I think that will continue to be the case in the qual area, certainly for the next few years anyway. Well, we'll certainly watch this space with great interest as it develops and uh, Vishal, thank you very much for your thoughts and for your time. You're welcome and thanks very much, Paul.